Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Kent. That's uh, that's my stuff. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we got today. So, got some really exciting stuff to share with you guys. Uh, so, I was doing some snooping around um, in the uh, column formatting, list formatting stuff, the code there, uh, because it is JavaScript and uh, anybody can do that. And I found some new things I wanted to show you because we could do some pretty cool stuff. So, over here we got our Warrior Horses site, right? So, those are horses that are warriors. I hope that makes that obvious. And, of course, they use SharePoint to help manage things. And here they're managing their agents. So they've got a variety of agents around the world, right, doing very important warrior horses business. And they want to spruce this list up a little bit, right? So they've got, they've got a nice little picture of the horse, but they want to do some more things here. So they've got their phone number, you know, what they like to drink, and their status currently, right? So let's take a look at what we can do. So before we get to that, let's take a look at some of the new um, operations, right, or operators out here. So if we format this column... We're going to use that. We're just going to type this in ourselves. So we're going to say Elm type is div, right? I'm going to add a comma. And then we're going to say text content equals. And this is the new one. So index of. This is a super powerful thing. So I'm going to give it the title column, right? So if I'm looking at the title column and I'm looking for, say, the letter R, lowercase r. And let's just run that. Let's close this thing up. Let's preview that. You'll notice here. We get the actual index inside the title column, which is code name in this case. I've renamed that. Oh, that's helpful. So you can see right here, this one says number four because right there it's a zero-based index. So zero, one, two, three, four is the R. And you set all the way down here. And that's great that we can see that it's a four, but what really helps is we see things like negative one, right? There is no R here. So you get a negative. Is anyone else getting a ton of static or is that me? No. All right. Great. There, there's some. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check if you can clean it. So. Okay. <laughs> it's gone. Perfect. Okay. All right. So negative one means it's not found, and that's super helpful. Even better is when we do like capital A, and we can see zero. So we can see what it starts with. So a negative one. So that is extremely helpful. So we're going to see how we use that in just a minute. So that's index up. So what you do is you provide what you want to look inside of and what you're searching for, and it'll tell you whether it's in there or not. Okay? So now let's take a look at another one here. Let's do two lowercase. This one should be pretty obvious. So two lowercase, all right? We'll get rid of the second parameter. It's just one parameter. We're going to pass in title. I'm going to preview that. It just takes whatever that is and makes it lowercase. Pretty, ex pretty exciting stuff. All right, let's take a look at another new one, and that is join. So join, you might not realize it, but some of these things are arrays behind the scenes, right? So in this case, our drink preference is a multi-select choice column, right? So I can choose multiple things here. What if I wanted to put those all together, right? So by default, if I don't apply any formatting with a multi-choice, I get a comma and a space. If it's a person field, they actually go on new lines, right? If I do any kind of formatting with them, I lose the space. In a person field, you get a, a semicolon. What if you want to control that? Well, that's where you provide your array right here, and then you're going to put in whatever your separator is. So if I wanted to put an ampersand in there, all right, we'll preview that. There we go. So we get this nice way to really control what goes on there, all right? Oh, that's a good point. You see, that's a good point. Let's see what we can do. Last one I want to show you, though, is because I think it's a little misleading, is length. So you would think length would be like an LEN function, right? So give us our string length. But it's actually designed for arrays. So it tells us how many items are in an array, right? So if we preview that... We can see that there were five choices here, two choices here, and so on. All right, but if we tried to do that with a string, like we'll put back in title, you're always going to get a one if that string is present. If the, if the object is not there, you're going to get a zero. So it's a little misleading, so be careful with the link function. I'm not actually going to demo a, a sample of that because I really haven't found a great use for it yet. All right, now let's actually take a look at what can we do with this information, right? So I want to look at that starts with, right? So the whole idea of an index of you know, where it becomes zero. So there is not currently a way to do C string length. So, sorry. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that becomes, it wouldn't be hard to implement that, so we'll see. Let's put a user voice in on that one. All right, so let's do a starts with. So we've got several new samples for you. I think uh, I added five or six the other day. So here's one for starting with, All right? So this is in uh, our SPDev list formatting repo under column samples, text starts with calling codes. Very catchy name, super readers remember. 
All we're going to do is we're going to grab this. So again, with the list formatting samples, you don't have to do any kind of crazy get stuff. You just copy and paste this stuff. So I'm going to copy it. So what I'm looking at is this phone number here. That's great. I've got the international calling code because we are citizens of the world. Right? But what if I want to do, you know, I want to actually understand who am I calling, where are they, right? So I can come in here and I can format this column. And if we take a look at this format, all I'm doing is that index of right here. I'm saying current field and I'm looking for the calling code for their country. And this is for the tooltip. I'm actually putting that in. So you can see all this goes and I'm just nesting those conditions. So you got a bunch of closing parentheses at the end here, right? So it's just, if it's three, you know, three, five, eight, that's Finland, right? Else, check if it's Australia and so on and so on, right? And then we're going to build a flag up top here. So if we take a look at that, bam! Look at that. Now, we can extend that further if we need to, right, to get all the countries of the world in here. But pretty easily, we're able to extract just a portion of that value. If we tried to do, you know, a traditional way of doing that, which would be a basic a giant switch statement where we looked at every possible phone number, that would be impossible to write as a format. But by using starts with, we can do some really powerful stuff. So let's save that one and move on. What about contains? So what if we want to We want to see we've got a few of these are dead, right? U.S. dude is dead, and that's very sad. We want to make sure we highlight that, call that out so we don't end up calling them, and it's an awkward conversation. I mean, horses don't really talk on the phone very well anyway. All right, so what we've got here is we've got our contains, so text contains. All right, and we're going to grab this. We're just going to grab this guy. And it's important to note here that we're not just doing an index is not equal to negative one. So it's basically we're reversing that. So let's actually grab a version of that over here that you guys can't see magic. All right, let's paste it here. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for the index of the inside the current field. I'm looking for the word dead. And I'm saying not equal to negative one. So in other words, it has it. Somewhere inside there, it has the word dead, and I'm going to turn it red. But what's important to note is this one down here, because it has a capital D, doesn't show up. So index of is case sensitive. So all you have to do is wrap this in two lower case. All right, we'll wrap that around our current field for dead. And we preview that. Bam. Now it works. Okay? All right. So you can start to see this gets really, really powerful when you can start to highlight things. You can apply that as a row format if I wanted to highlight the whole row based on that. Now, what about this? So one of the things that annoys me about multi-select choice columns or multi-select people fields is the order you pick them matters, right? You'll see that some of these are slightly out of order. Depending on how you do this, it gets a little weird. This is hard to, to read in any aggregate way, right? Individual list items, that's great. But let's take a look at this one. So all I'm doing with this sample are multi-choice icons. Let me grab all this. I'm just doing the same thing over and over. Let's take a look at one of them. We're looking for an icon, and all we're doing is we always put out the icon, and then we check to see. We do a join first, right, to make it into a string, because you can't do an index of on an array. We join it first, and then we look for it. Does it have one of our choices? And if it does, so not equal to negative one, we apply a theme color based on that. So let's take a look. Format this column. We're going to go to advanced mode. I'm going to paste that in here. Preview that. So you start to see, now we can really see what's happening here. So now we got, now I can easily see who here actually drinks water and who's into the beer, right? And so on and so forth. All right, that's it. That's our horse formatting tips for you. Oh, wait. One last thing. Here's some resources here. So as a reminder, this is what they're for. The documentation for this is uh, not yet approved, but once it is, you'll see it. So it has been submitted. So that's over here, right there. So you can see we've got examples of all these operators and how to use them. So that is coming soon. As soon as that PR gets approved, you can see how to do all that. All right. Let's take a look. And then lastly, here's some resources. There are also samples related to multi-select person fields. Uh, so check those out as well. Uh, but all those samples are here. There's a ton of stuff in there. We just added a bunch of new ones. And then there are blog posts if you want to see a little more in-depth on any of these things. Those are all here as well. Okay, that's it for me. Mm -hmm.